Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is my bookshelf tour part three. So uh, here we come to the last section of my fiction collection, not including the books on my TBR because that's a whole other thing. Um, there's a lot of those. But yeah, so this is my fiction section. Uh, this is the shelves right behind me here. Um, it's a three shelf bookcase. And so let's get to it. I believe in the last video we were in the middle of my Tamora Pierce collection. So it will be the rest of the P's through to the Z's. Yes, I say Z. I'm Australian. So a little bit of a scan down. This is the top of this bookshelf in which I have my very prettily special edition uh, bound copy of Little Women and the Other Novels by Louisa May Alcott. Um, a fan, a little trinket box, my Dalek, a pile of uh, photo albums and precious um, picture books from my childhood. There's Stradbroke Dreamtime by Ujiru, uh, The Enchanted Wood, which is all about fairies by Shirley Barber, and my baby book and Possum Magic. And like I said, and then in the middle we have the complete works of Shakespeare, which is my special copy of Shakespeare. It's all illustrated and really pretty. And we have the top shelf, which has again a little trinket box, my tarot cards, and apparently, yeah, okay, I'd forgotten that part of my vacuum cleaner was there. That will be moving. Then book two, shelf two, and the bottom shelf, which still has some space in it. So first up, we have the Protector of the Small Quartet. I've got these in a few different um, editions. So again, by Tamora Pierce, First Test, Page, Squire, and Lady Knight. Then one of my favourite duologies by Tamara Pierce. Well, it's her my only the only duology, but my, one of my favourite series, Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen. And then we have the Becca Cooper trilogy, Terrier, Bloodhound and Mastiff, which was the first book I pre-ordered. So um, I really like these ones and I really need to reread Mastiff. I keep getting stuck after Bloodhound because Mastiff breaks my heart, people. I have a couple of one-off Tortel books so far. So there is a spy Tortel, a spy's guide. And the newest Tamara Pierce book, Tempests and Slaughter, which is the first book in a new series about Numair. Next, we come to Tamora Pierce's uh, younger books in the Emmeline universe. So this is the first quartet, um, The Circle of Magic, and it is the magic in the weaving, the power in the storm, the fire in the forging, and the healing in the vine. I believe they have different titles elsewhere in the world, but these are the titles I know them of. I don't have all the Emmeline books in hard copy, but these are the first two books, I believe. I don't have all the Emmeline books in hard copy, but these are the first two books in the Circle Opens Quartet, Magic Steps and Street Magic. And finally, for Tamara Pierce, I have the anthology that she edited with Josephine Sherman, Young Warriors, Stories of Strength. Moving on, I have The Fall of the House of Usher and Other Writing for Edgar Allan Poe, which was again a book I bought for class. I'm still exploring the Discworld, but I do have a small collection of Terry Pratchett novels. So we have The Colour of Magic, Equal Rights, Witches Abroad, and the first two Tiffany Aching books, The Wee Free Men, and A Hat Full of Sky. Mother of Invention, edited by Rivka Raphael and Tanzarana Roberts. This is another one of 12 Planet Press's anthologies. And now we're hitting my Tanzarana Roberts collection with Siren Beat, which is a novella. The Mocklaw Chronicles, which includes the Mocklaw Omnibus, which has the first two novels, Ink Black Magic, which is the third novel, and Bounty, which is a collection of short stories in the Mocklaw universe. And finally, the first Tansy Randall Roberts book I ever read, my signed copy of Love and Roman Punk, which is one of the 12 Planet collections. Now we have Trial of Lightning, which is his first book in Rebecca Roanhorse's urban fantasy series. Glamour in Glass by Mary Robinette Kowal, which is the second book in her Glamorous Histories books, which I have read the first one in ebook 
and I really need to finish this series because it is so my thing. And finally for this top shelf we have more books from my childhood from the Teen Power Inc series by Emily Rodder. The first one is The Ghost of Raven Hill. Then we have The Sorcerer's Apprentice, The Disappearing TV Star, Cry of the Cat, The Secret of Banyan Bay, Poison Pen, Nowhere to Run, Dangerous Game, and lastly, Bad Apples. This was a contemporary series in the 90s by Australian author Emily Rodder. Um, she also writes fantasy, which I've never actually read any of her fantasy. But these were sort of adventure and mystery books about a group of friends. First up on shelf two over here, we have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Then we start my Harry Potter collection with The Tales of Beedle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, A Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and then we hit my bought on the day of release hardbacks of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. This is another one-off Star Wars book, The New Rebellion by Christine Catherine Rouge. The famous novella We Who Are About Two by Joanna Russ. The Doctor Who novel The Glamour Chase by Gary Russell. Then another book from my childhood, Sleepover Friends Patty's New Look by Sue Saunders. And now we're hitting my Shakespeare collection. So this is the Arden Shakespeare's King Lear, which I believe was the one I studied in college. My special Catherine Tate and David Tennant version of Much Ado About Nothing, because I went to see that play and so I bought the play with the lovely cover and I believe there's like an interview. The Norton Critical Edition of Macbeth. The Norton Antony and Cleopatra which I did study at university. And then also from university, a Norton edition, because my university likes Norton editions and they're very handy, of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. After that, we have the Disabled People Destroy Science Fiction edition of Uncanny Magazine in hard copy because I am a Kickstarter backer. That is edited by Elsa Sons and Henry, Dominic Parisian, Nicolette Bereshoff, S. Lu, and Judith Tarr. And then we have the absolutely excellent Australian Urban Fantasy Trilogy by Angela Slatter, Vigil, Corpse Light and Restoration. I still live in hope that there might be further books because this is a complete trilogy, but there were questions left unanswered. This unjacketed hardcover is, again, from my childhood, the book that always made me cry, Heidi by Joanna Spirey. One of my recent discoveries in Australian literature in the last couple of years that I absolutely adore, The Women in Black by Madeline St. John. Then we have a selection of Star Wars books by Michael A. Stackpole, uh, X-Wing Wedges Gamble, which is the first X-Wing book, X-Wing The Back to War, X-Wing Izard's Revenge. There are more in that X-Wing series by Michael A. Stackpole, but those books have fallen apart, so I ended up buying them back in ebook. And then I Jedi by Michael A. Stackpole, which in the original uni Legends universe, I believe, was the first and possibly the only Star Wars book written in first person. Then we have Dracula by Bram Stoker. White Boots by Noel Stretfield. The Noel Stretfield, the Noel Stretfield stories from my childhood that I had to hunt down because they're out of print. Gemma, Gemma and Sisters, Gemma Alone and Goodbye Gemma. These are the books, at least I think Gemma the first one is, which uh, started my love affair with Lady Jane Grey. Then we have Doctor Who and the Zabi by Bill Stratton. And another of the Twelve Planet collections, Lucy Sussex's Thief of Lives. And that is the end of shelf number two over here. To start off the bottom shelf, I have The Dark Griffin and The Griffin's Flight by K.J. Taylor. I never actually finished the first book in this series, but I can't seem to let it go, so maybe one day. 
Then we have the excellent SF Masterworks anthology, Her Smoke Rose Up Forever by James Tiptree Jr. Then we have my Tolkien collection, which is The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Silmarillion, which, yes, I haven't actually read yet, and Farmer Giles of Ham. And finally, for this first stack, we have the classic Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. We have Loaded by Christos Tsiolkas, which is an Australian novel that I had to read for one of my classes. Didn't really like it. The Truce at Bakura by Kathy Tyres, which I liked as a teenager, rereading it as an adult. This is one of the Star Wars books that unfortunately the Sark Fairy has visited. Then we have the first two of Catherine M. Valenti's Fairyland books, The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making and The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Revels There. Also by Catherine M. Valenti, we have the Refrigerator Monologues. Another classic bought for university studies, The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. It's a classic Gothic novel. Then we have the first two Murderbot Diaries novellas from Tor.com, All Systems Red and Artificial Condition by Martha Wells. This is one of the new version of Star Wars books, the first in the Aftermath trilogy by Chuck Wendig called Aftermath. Then we have three excellent anthologies from Fablecroft, edited by Tahani Wesley, World's Next Door, One Small Step and Fantazine. Again, from my childhood, we have Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. Then the second of the Gemworld stories, The Fire Opal Mechanism by Fran Wilde. This is another Tor.com novella. And these are the only two of this particular old legend Star Wars series I read for younger readers. The Galaxy of Fear books, Eaten Alive and City of the Dead by John Whitman. Funnily enough, there are a lot of Star Wars books at the end of the alphabet for authors. So we have The Courtship of Princess Leia by Dave Wolverton. Force Heretic 3 Reunion by Sean Williams and Shane Dix from The New Jedi Order. The trilogy that started it all for the Legends universe back in the 1990s by Timothy Zahn and some of my favourites, Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising and The Last Command. Also by Timothy Zahn, we have the duology that wrapped up my preferred era of that Legends universe, Spectre of the Past and Vision of the Future. And then the last book on these shelves is Pride by Ibi Zaboy. And so that brings to a close part three of my bookshelf tour and my fiction collection. So uh, let me know in the comments down below, down below if you've been enjoying these videos. Um, and maybe in the future I will also do uh, videos of my non-fiction collection and maybe even my TBR. So yeah, comments in the, down below and I will see you all again really soon. Bye.